G'day YouTube. Let's talk about speed humps. The bastards of things. You know those really annoying white stripy humps in the middle of the road designed to supposedly slow people down? Yeah, that's right. Those really annoying things in the middle of the road that you have to navigate around and all they do is put wear and tear on your car and aggravate people. Who wants them? Who needs them? And who actually likes them? If I could meet the person who invented speed humps, I'd give him a sucker punch straight to the gonads. I think speed bumps are in most parts of the world, or at least all of the parts of the world that have roads. What does this mean? Well, it means speed humps inconvenience millions and millions upon millions of people every day, and it's an atrocity. Boy, I'd love to know the statistics on that. If anyone knows, let me know. So speed humps are basically designed to slow people down. That's all they do. I don't know why, because traveling at the speed limit on a side street is perfectly okay. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the issues brought about by speed humps. First of all, they create wear and tear on your vehicle. They can put wear and tear on your brakes, they put wear and tear on your engine, and they put wear and tear on your suspension. Secondly, they create lots of pollution. Now every time you brake and accelerate over a speed hump, that's just more pollution going straight into the atmosphere. If you are cruising down a side street at the normal speed limit, chances are your revolutions per minute would be just above idle speed. But when you're going over speed humps, you have to accelerate maybe to 3,000, 4,000 revs per minute, and this causes undue pollution it's straight into the atmosphere. Now, I am not a green thumb leftist, but undue pollution straight into the atmosphere, who needs it? It shouldn't be welcomed and it shouldn't be warranted. Thirdly, how many lives do speed humps actually save? If anything, I think they're more dangerous because you have to concentrate on what you're driving over and you're not potentially scanning around looking for other dangers that might present around the road or on the road. They're bastards of things. How much time is wasted every day just from speed humps? The number would be astronomically high and you wouldn't even be able to count it. Fourthly, they slow emergency vehicles down. Now, if you're in your house dying and an emergency vehicle is two or three minutes late because they've been over 20 or 30 speed humps to get to you, how bad is that? And that's not to mention all of the medical items that might be flying around in the ambulance. How would you be if you were an ambulance driver or a paramedic and shit's going everywhere from asshole to breakfast hole and there's nothing you can do about it? It's a nuisance and a pest and they shouldn't exist. And what about people with lowered vehicles where their ride height is a lot lower than normal? Sometimes it's illegal and for good reason. Speed humps! Have you ever seen some poor SOB with a really low vehicle try to navigate over a speed hump? Well, it's virtually impossible. What happens is they have to go extremely slow and even still, the bottom of their car probably will scrape, causing damage to their vehicle. For those of you who don't know, this is why there is a legal limit to how low your vehicle can be. The other thing is, speed humps can be very dangerous for cyclists and motorbike riders. Now, if you're driving along on a motorbike or a bike, and you come across a speed bump, and you don't even know it's there, chances are you're gonna have a big crash or a stack. This is a big problem. And if you're driving along on a motorbike with absolutely excessive speed and you hit a speed bump and you don't even know it's there, you're either going to have a whole lot of injuries or you're going to be dead. And how many taxpayer dollars are wasted on speed humps? The government don't care. It's not their money. If I had one cent for every dollar wasted on speed humps, I'd be a bloody millionaire. And that's not to mention all the money spent on signage and painting the speed humps and all the other little things that go on around them. And the other thing is, speed humps are bad for traffic flow. What happens is all of the roads without speed humps get congested with traffic. And the reason why is because people avoid the roads with speed humps. And what about people with injuries, uh, and in particular, a bad back? 
what happens is when you go over a speed hump, it can jolt your back and it can hurt and it can even cause injuries. Now my back's actually pretty rock solid, but I really feel sorry for the poor SOBs that have crook backs. And if you're in a truck and you've got a bad back, well, you can forget it. The trouble is, trucks don't have the same suspension as smaller vehicles, and it hurts a lot more when you've got a crook back and you're in a truck. And then the government's got the nerve to bring in a law that you're only allowed to lift your four-wheel drive by three inches. I really do think people should just start driving around in monster trucks. I really do. And that way they can just cruise straight over the speed humps. And if any cars get in the way, they can cruise straight over those too. And have you ever heard the expression, I'm not a morning person? Well, I can tell you what, I wouldn't be a morning person if I lived right next to a speed hump. The trouble is, you get people accelerating and braking all night. And then by the time the morning comes, you're just really, really pissed off. You know, you got cars accelerating and braking all the time. And then you get trucks or vans with their unsecure loads that might be flopping around all over the place. You know, and truck suspension isn't exactly quiet. So, you know, it, it, it can become a big problem. The other thing to consider is shock waves and where a speed hump might be placed. Now I know in the UK that they have banned speed humps from being within 25 metres of bridges, tunnels and subways. So what happens is, in particular with heavier vehicles, when they go over speed bumps at speed, they send, they send shock waves going right through the ground. You know, and obviously if uh, in the UK there's a 25 metre rule, maybe shock waves go up to 25 metres. This can mean big problems. And shockwaves have actually been proven to cause damage to properties. And what about the extra cost of the fuel wastage? The trouble is, every time you accelerate and brake over a speed hump, that's just more fuel being wasted. If I had a cent for every litre of fuel wasted on speed bumps, I would be one rich son of a bitch. If someone were to actually figure out the statistics of fuel wasted every day all over the world from speed bumps, the number would just be astronomically high. It's ridiculous. And you know what? I don't even think speed bumps slow down most vehicles. Look, I've seen full drives and driven full drives over speed bumps, and I can tell you, you don't even have to slow down. You just cruise straight over them. So all in all, we need to look at the pain versus benefit ratio when implementing items such as speed bumps. You know, and it goes the same for in implementing new law or implementing new inventions. You have to look at the pain versus benefit ratio. If it's too painful and causing too many problems for people and not enough benefit comes out of it, don't implement it. Don't release it into the public because it will cause major issues for people all around the world. But anyway, folks, that's my two cents. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and uh, have a good day.